Money Marijuana Nation uh, producer Shea Gunther here with a quick bit before we start the show. As you no doubt noticed, we didn't have a show for the first few days this week. Monday was a federal holiday, which we generally recognize. And then I had to be down in Boston on Tuesday and Wednesday for business related to the NCIA conference. And I just couldn't get a day of work in either day. I got home yesterday and received an email from a very kind listener who's been supporting my work as a patron listener. Patrons are folks who go above and beyond the call of being a regular listener by supporting me through Patreon. They are awesome, and I'm hugely appreciative of their support. Anyway, the email from the now former patron listener expressed unhappiness over how much time I take off from producing this show, citing the fact that I take two weeks of vacation in the summer and two weeks in the winter with a random day here and there to go snowboarding with my kids. I do apologize to that former patron listener for the days that I'm not able to provide news. To be clear, I'm not sorry for taking the time off at all, but I am certainly sorry that when I do take vacation time, you're all left without the news that you rely on. I live and breathe marijuana news, and I love the fact that my job is telling all of you all the good bits that you should know. It's an honor and a privilege to have this job. But this job is also a heck of a lot of work. I'm also a single dad of three, and I want to work to live, not live to work. I think the five podcasts that I now produce and the other products that we put out here at MJ Today Media are better for that philosophy. So to that unhappy former patron listener, I wish you better luck at being able to carve out time for yourself to step back from your job. We could all use that privilege, which I acknowledge having and taking. Sorry about the long preamble on today's show, but I figured if one person emailed me about the issue, there's likely more who feel the same way, and I wanted to address it. So now, let's get into it. This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our exclusive multi-state cannabis operator sponsor, Cureleaf, one of the nation's top vertically integrated medical and wellness cannabis operators with 53 local dispensaries, 15 cultivation sites, and 24 processing facilities operating in 14 states. You can learn more about Cureleaf over at Cureleaf.com with Cureleaf spelled C-U-R-A-L-E-A-F. That's Cureleaf.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Thursday, February 20th, 2020, and you're tuned into episode 888 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. We lead off today's news in Colorado, where the Department of Revenue's Marijuana Enforcement Division just released numbers for how the state's legal marijuana industry fared in 2019. I'm very happy to report that Colorado sold $1.75 billion in legal marijuana last year, up an impressive 13% over the previous year. That's $1.75 billion that would have, if Colorado had not legalized adult use, flowed through the illicit market. To say nothing of all the money saved by police not having to bust people for marijuana. For its part, Colorado pulled in $302 million in marijuana sales tax last year. The state is reporting that August of 2019 was the year's biggest month in terms of revenue, with $173 million in sales being made. Colorado remains one of our industry's best examples of how to handle legalization, and these numbers continue to back up that thesis. Nice work all around. Ben Adlin over Marijuana Moment details an important report just issued yesterday by the U.S. Department of Agriculture looking at the current state of the American industrial hemp industry, which has been on a bit of a tear in recent years as federal prohibitions on cultivation have been thrown off, first in 2014 and then most recently at the end of 2018 with the complete lifting of federal prohibition on industrial hemp. As regular listeners know, though, the rules and regulations for how the industry will run are still being worked out. So we're still very much in the early days of this game. According to the 83-page report, which you should download and read yourself, in 2018, 90,000 acres of hemp cultivation were reported in various U.S. pilot programs. The report's authors don't yet have stats for last year, but I'm guessing it's way up over that. If you do any kind of business in hemp, this is one you need to dive into fully. You can read the whole story and find a link to the downloadable report yourself over at Marijuana Moments. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. 
Ben's colleague over at Marijuana Moments, Kyle Yeager, rounds out our final top story today with a pickup of news out of Alabama of a proposed bill just approved by a state legislative committee that would set up a limited medical marijuana program. The Alabama State Senate's Judiciary Committee voted 8 to 1 in favor of Senate Bill 165, which would set up a medical marijuana commission to oversee a program that would allow registered patients to use non-smokable or vapable forms of processed marijuana. If made into law, SB 165 would allow for no more than 32 dispensaries throughout the state and would create a list of 15 qualifying conditions. If this one catches your attention, swing over to Marijuana Moments and dive into Kyle's piece for more. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Caroleaf, one of the nation's top multi-state cannabis operators with 53 local dispensaries, 15 cultivation sites, and 24 processing facilities operating in 14 states. Caroleaf knows exactly how positive marijuana can be for people, especially those who utilize it for medical benefits, which is one of the reasons why they support the work of the Veterans Cannabis Project, which works to expand access to medical marijuana by military veteran patients. There are too many veterans in our nation's military who could find relief with the use of medical marijuana who just aren't able yet to legally access it. The Veterans Cannabis Project is working to fix that. To learn more about the Veterans Cannabis Project, Project, including how you can help in their mission, open up their website at vetscp.org. That's V E T S C P.org. Thanks again to everyone at Curly for supporting our show and the vital work done over at the Veterans Cannabis Project. All right, time for the Blitz. Kyle's back to take us into the Blitz with news out of Virginia on the significant progress being made in passing a marijuana decriminalization bill that we've covered a few times here on The Daily. The legislation is working its way through Virginia's two legislative bodies, and as Kyle is reporting, lawmakers in the House of Delegates and the Senate are working to merge the language of the two different bills so they can skip having to route through a bicameral conference committee before being considered by Governor Ralph Northam who is expected to sign it into law. There is a little hiccup right now with some language in the House version that's absent in the Senate, but from the sounds of it, the two versions are otherwise the same. If signed into law, the legislation would remove criminal penalties for the possession of up to an ounce of marijuana. We have some numbers out of Pennsylvania on how medical marijuana patients in that state are utilizing the large and growing network of legal medical marijuana dispensaries. The state asked patients and caregivers last month to take a 13-question anonymous survey. Among its findings, which you should swing over to read in full, are the 59% of respondents who said they paid $200 or more per month on medical marijuana. In all, 14% were paying between $500 and $1,000 per month. Pennsylvania currently counts its ranks of registered medical patients at over 150,000, so this survey does carry some weight. Again, a good one to read in full, especially if you're in the medical side of the industry. Pop over to Mary Jane for more here. The online cannabis wholesale marketplace LeafLink just issued a report on the pricing of legal marijuana products as they tracked over the course of 2019. The report looks at 10 different legal states and five product categories with vaporizer cartridges, concentrates, flour, pre-rolls, and edibles all laid out. According to LeafLink's numbers, the overall average price of most legal cannabis products fell slightly last year, but that was mainly driven by big drops in the price of legal marijuana flour. Another one to add to the list to read in full. In a day packed full of stories of new reports, we have another one to throw in as Randy Robinson over at Mary Jane covers a new report from the marketing firm Technavio predicting that the global market for legal marijuana edibles will be $17 billion by the year 2022. A newly proposed bill in California would afford some measure of protection to users of legal medical cannabis who apply for jobs with the state government or with private companies. Right now, there are a large number of companies in California seeking new employees that turn away new applicants for using perfectly legal medical cannabis, something that would change if the bill was signed into law. The proposed legislation does carve out exemptions to the policy for so-called safety-sensitive positions like police officers, pilots, and bus drivers, and for companies that rely on federal funding. Lawmakers in Utah are going in another direction with proposed legislation that would make clear the fact that private companies are perfectly free to ban their workers from using medical marijuana. 
On the brighter side, Senate Bill 121 doesn't block companies from having progressive medical cannabis policies, which I guess we should be a little grateful for. With another Utah headline, Ashley Schwellenbach over at Leafly pulled together a good longer form piece diving into the current state of progressive medical marijuana reform in the very conservative state of Utah. Utah voters first passed a medical marijuana ballot measure back in 2018, which was followed by state lawmakers passing legislation creating a limited but functional enough system. Utah is expected to see its first open dispensaries sometime later this year, so maybe not a bad overall storyline to follow. Leafly's David Beanenstock wraps up our day today with a story that you should open up in full and share around to all the people you know. As it's an important headline looking at the treatment one young black high school student in Dayton, Ohio is going through as he's been accused of smelling like marijuana in class and tossed out of school for 10 days. This gross miscarriage of justice involves young Jordan Cottrell, who was accused by a teacher one day of smelling like marijuana. Jordan's bag and locker were searched, neither had marijuana, and Jordan's mother, a registered nurse, soon showed up to school with an instant marijuana testing kit, which she administered to her son and that came back negative. She then drove Jordan directly to a medical facility for more in-depth drug screening, which again turned up negative. Despite all of that, the school principal recommended that Jordan be tossed out of school entirely with him ultimately getting a 10-day suspension. What makes this all the more appalling is the case of a white student in the same school who was actually caught with marijuana who was also given a 10-day suspension. Read this story. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interweb, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Cureleaf, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.